He's the Lord. He's the Lord. He's the Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He's the Lord. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. 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 Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is the Lord. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Your name is higher above all the names. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. Your name is higher above all the names. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. Father, we bless your name, the Most High God, the Lily of the Valley, the Ancient of the Days. Lord, we give you thanks for today. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your love. Thank you for this hour. Thank you for bringing us to your presence. We return all the glory to you in the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we ask that your presence be established in our midst this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you shall speak to us and let your word impact us in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon us on our shortcomings, any way we have sinned against you, any way we have not done the right thing, any way we have lived in iniquity. Lord, we confess our shortcomings and we pray that you forgive us, cleanse us, sanctify us, purify us in the name of Jesus. And we pray that nothing shall be a barrier to are receiving this afternoon in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we shall have a wonderful and memorable experience with you this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the living God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and on behalf of uh, Vika and Archdeacon, the Venerable John Ogenekewe Aboro, we welcome you to God's presence this afternoon to our midday prayer. And we ask that the Almighty God will continually uphold you in the name of Jesus. He will hearken to your cry. And the Lord shall put a smile upon your face. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please, you can sit back. Today, our the thing we are looking at this afternoon is shut the door. Shut the door. And our text is from 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 4. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible says, And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels. 
and thou shalt sell th set them aside that which is full. And we are looking at this text in reference to Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Let's open to Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. The Bible says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closest, closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Praise the living God. From the anchor text, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 4, the man of God, Elisha, advised the widow, who is the wife of a prophet. He advised her on what to do to be able to be free from her death. Because the woman, the widow, who is who was the wife of a, a, a prophet was so much indebted that she could not pay. The only option is to give her children as collateral or in exchange for the death as servants, as slaves. But she ran to Elisha. He ran, he ran to Elisha, the man of God, so Elisha advised her on what she must do to be able to free herself from the death, the death that was already choking her. That death was also ripping her to frustration and to death. She was so much in death, but she obeyed the simple instruction. She was ready to obey the instruction of the man of God. And when that was done, her situation, her story changed altogether. So, we all are in some way or one or, one or the other way, this woman a lot is before us. Many things are facing us. Many situations are begging us for direction. There are many situations before us begging for direction, begging for solution. And we are battling with a lot of distractions. We have a lot of distractions that even when you want to focus on something, Another distraction is springing up somewhere. But we have to shut the door. Tell your neighbor, shut the door. The woman was so much in a lack. But she was told to shut the door. Door is an access point to a building or room. And when it is open, even the temperature will be the same outside and inside. But when a door is shut, there is something they call room temperature. Room temperature is maintained. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, that we should shut the door while praying. And that instruction is still valid Till forever. There are a lot of distractions out there, but except you shut the door, you will remain in your distractions. So we need to disconnect ourselves from every distraction. You cannot achieve anything in the midst of distraction. Shut yourself off from every distraction around you and focus on God. 
Jesus Christ said that when we need to pray, when we want to pray, we should go in the closet and shut the door. What he was saying in essence is that we need to disconnect ourselves from whatsoever that is going around us and focus on the Father. The same thing, that the same strategy that Elisha gave the widow. He told her, go inside, shut the door before pouring that oil into the jars. When you shut the door to the world, when you shut the door to the world and her distractions, distractions, the world and her fears, then you open the door of communication with God. Brethren, both doors cannot be opened simultaneously. Both doors cannot be opened simultaneously. We have to stop engaging with the distractions and start engaging with God. Elisha shut the door to pray for the dead son of the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 33. When the Shunammite woman lost her son and Elisha was called to pray for was told about it. And when the man of God went to the house. He shut the door. He shut the door. He disconnected himself from every distraction. Distraction of cry from people around. Distraction of wailing around. He disconnected himself from what was happening outside. And focus on God for what he wants to happen. Jesus prayed for the dead daughter of a certain ruler in Matthew chapter 9, 24 to 25. Matthew 9, 24 to 25. And Bible made us know that he put off the people. He has to put off the people so that he can be able to pray. And that lady was raised from death. Then also Peter, Apostle Peter did the same in Acts chapter 9 verse 40. When Dorcas died in sickness at Joppa. When Dorcas died, they reached out to Peter that this person died, our sister died. And when he came, he put off the people. He shut off distractions and prayed. And through that prayer, Dockers became alive. He was made to have her life back. So there is a secret. To prayer, there is a secret to effective prayer. Secret to effective prayer is shutting the door. Shutting the door. If you are praying with open doors, you are praying but the door is not shut, you cannot achieve much because you are praying in distractions. You are praying, you are worrying over many things, you are, you know, you are praying, but your mind is not in that prayer. You need to shut the door. You have to know that the key to open door is in shutting the door. The key to open door is in the shutting, in shutting the doors. Because when you shut doors, and commune with God, you have opened a door. 
The God you met in the secret is that God that rewards in the open. So it is beneficial that whatsoever distraction that might come your way, shut it off and focus on God. Shut the door from every form of distraction in your place of work, in your marriage, in your family, in your business. Shut the door. Go to God. Shut the door. Focus on God. Don't allow anything to distract you. Because it is only God that can change a situation. Praise the living God. Let's stand as we begin to pray. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Let's begin to pray. Say, Father, I disconnect myself from every distraction. In Jesus' name. Make it a prayer. Father, I disconnect myself from every distraction in the name of Jesus. Make it a prayer. I disconnect myself from every distraction in Jesus' name. He said, when you want to pray, shut the door. Lord, I disconnect myself. I shut the door to every distraction. I refuse to get drowned inside of destruction of life. Lord, I shut off everything that the enemy is bringing my way. I shut them off that I may focus on you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Say this prayer. Father, keep me focused on you. Can we make that a prayer? Father, Keep me focused on you. God should be our focus. Make it a prayer. Ask him, Father, be my focus. Let me focus on you. Help me to give my full attention to you. As I close the door to the world and had distractions, as I shut the door, may I open the door to you Help me to give you quality and undivided attention. Make it a prayer. Make it a prayer. Ask God that you will give him full attention. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, we are still there. He said, when you pray, but when you pray, so, Jesus Christ is telling us because we need to pray. When you pray. So, we are not arguing whether prayer is needed or not, but he's telling us what we have to do when we pray. That means we are expected to pray. When you pray. So, ask this, let's pray. Pray this prayer. Say after me, Father, revive my prayer life. Revive my prayer life. It is not a good, a, a good omen that we don't pray. Make it a prayer. I don't know how your prayer life is, but Jesus is expecting us to be prayerful to pray. Say so when you pray, ask him, Father, revive my prayer life. Revive my prayer life. Let it come from the depth of your heart. 
Ask God, Father, revive my prayer life. Make it a prayer. Help me to pray more. Help me to pray more. Help me to pray more. Let me not be discussing problem. Let me not be discussing situation. Let me not be discussing issues. But Lord, help me to pray about problems. Help me to pray about issues. In the name of Jesus, help me to always pray and not faint. Revive me, Lord. Strengthen me and help me to be at my post. Help me to be a watchman. Help me to seek you. Help me to be prayerful in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to create time for prayer. No matter how busy I am, Lord, help me to create time for prayer. In the name of Jesus, help me to daily shut the door and come in with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, as you desire to pray, the Lord will revive your prayer life in the name of Jesus. And as you shut the door, doors of greatness and goodness shall be opened unto you in the name of Jesus. Door of unlimited blessings, the Lord shall open unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to pray for the church. Say, Father, revive your church. Make it a prayer. Father, revive your church. Help us as a church to shut the door. To shut the door from distractions in the world. From distractions here and there. And to focus on you. Help us to shut the doors of unnecessary discussions. But focus on you. Help us to shut the door of busy and focus on you. The world will always want to keep us busy. But Lord, help us to shut that door and focus on you. Lord, we pray that you shall help us to focus on our calling, that the church will be a platform to revive souls. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I pray that the Lord shall strengthen the church of God and help us to shut the door. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let us pray for our church leaders. Pray for our primate. Pray for our archbishop. Pray for our bishop and Mama Lagos. Pray for our archdeacon and vicar and Mama Leki. Pray that God will strengthen them. That God will strengthen guide them that God will give them the wisdom to shut the door from every distraction and focus on their kingdom mandate that God will help them that they will not fail his kingdom but they shall be relevant before God and shall not serve the table. Pray for the priest in this church in the diocese and beyond that God will strengthen them. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. I want us to thank God for the gift of new month. The Lord has been merciful to us bringing us into the month of October. Thank God for the prayer walk we had yesterday at the Centenary City. It was successful. The Lord gave us a wonderful weather and we marched, we walked and prayed and we seek his presence. 
Thank God for a huge success it was. There was no sad news. The Lord brought us and the Lord saw us back to our different destinations. Pray for, pray for this nation. We celebrated 64th Independence Anniversary yesterday. Pray that Nigeria, the glory of Nigeria shall be revealed. Declare unto this nation, Nigeria arise and shine. As 64 arise and shine. Begin to declare it unto this nation that Nigeria shall arise and shine. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Bring your supplications and petitions before God. Bring your prayers, your personal, personal need. Bring that, that thing that is, is giving you sleepless nights, bring it before God. Our God is able. He can do all things. We give you all the glory, ancient of the days, the most high God. We bless your name. Be thou exalted, be thou magnified, be thou glorified in Jesus' name. Thank you for this moment of prayer we have, we, we have with you. We thank you for blessing our soul with your word. Lord, help us that your word will continually impact on us in the name of Jesus. We return all the glory to you because we know that you have answered our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to appreciate you once again for joining us in today's midday prayer. And we want to also remind us that we are meeting this evening by 6 p.m. for the victory hour. Please have that date with God and make it a wonderful date. Please, if you are not able to come in person, you can as well join us online and the Lord will continually to bless you in the name of Jesus. Let us say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.